Rightio, afternoon Wells. Well, um, this is just gonna, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a model review, so uh, roll the intro. Hi, Impy Trev here, and welcome to my channel. Um, hope you get something out of it. Afternoon Wells, it's uh, on the way to one o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm just gonna do a model review. So I've literally just finished the uh, 1962 Impala. Firstly, the model itself, well, the model itself was missing bits out of the box. The, um, the main differential housing and the disc brake front, the disc brake front end was also missing out of the box. Um, so what I learned out of that was wait till the parts arrive if you can get them because I've learned that putting the model together out of sequence and not in, putting the model together out of sequence um, and are not in the, um, direct order that the uh, instructions tell you to do can leave you in a whole lot of trouble because when you go to put the missing bits in after you've assembled a lot of the other stuff nothing lines up and you end up making a hell of a mess like I put that on before I got the diff in which should have been in before I put all the front end in um, and all this is just a complete mismatch and um, un unfortunately it was not a very rewarding model to do so and also Off. Uh, also, not as a problem, but there are just so many leftover pieces that you pay for that you just don't use. Maybe I can use them in future models. So I've got all these parts, numerous amount of tyres and bits and pieces and stick. Um, I've got numerous parts and pieces left over that I'm not sure what to do with. Um, also with this model. Um, okay, so... What I want to get to on this particular model is, okay, so that's the, um, I don't know if you can see that probably, that's the Peterbilt I built, there it is there. That actually went together pretty good. Um, I did have a couple of problems with the bonnet hinge that um, I, I snapped the little clips off, but other than that, that one come together pretty good. It's got a really good interior. You can't really see in there, but the dash is quite good. And you also can't see, but I've done a really good painting out the sleeper bed and everything in there. So. That was this is another Revell model that was pretty good. Now, with these models, you get your paint chart, but you also get a complete parts list of every part in the model and its name and what it does. It's a very comprehensive um, sheet. Um, the 56 Chevy I did, that was, um, well, I did Verge the first. That was a very good model to make. I actually enjoyed building that one, that was quite good. So the 57 Chevy, yeah, had a few little complications with this one, but not too bad. Um, just getting back in the model, the bonnet doesn't open very far, the detail's pretty good, and it sort of, it, it went together pretty good, um, and a lot of these parts, um, like the fuel tank and all that, were individual parts that I could paint individually, and I, I sort of enjoyed doing that one, which has really kicked off to me buying, or getting into the uh, Peterbilt, and then eventually, I've now got a stack of models here. So getting back to the uh, 62 Impala and their sheet, you come to the 62 Impala and their instructions, there's no parts list. So even though you sort of know what the parts are, unlike the other models, there's a full parts list, part name, part number on the trees which is really great. So you can sort of, you know, without having to guess what the part is, you can go through. And when it comes to your painting sequence, um, it makes it a lot of easier. It makes it a lot easier when you want, your when you want to paint your parts. So, um, so, yeah, the, so yeah, the biggest drama I had with the, uh, the 62 Impala, this one, was there was parts literally missing from the kit, which is not very good. I actually emailed, um, I think it was Ravel distributor here in Australia. I emailed him and said, I've, I've got this kit and the parts were missing. As you, as you might remember in a previous video, I actually jumped the bike and rode over to Gainer to the, and I was going to the gem shop to tell them what had happened. Um, I think I was looking for a bit of compensation. But anyway, um, and they happened to be closed. So anyway, I got home and I emailed them, not the gem shop, I emailed uh, the distributor for Revel here in Australia. Uh, within three days or less, they got back to me and said they would post that part out they posted the two parts actually, the disc brake front end and they posted the diff housing out to me um, and it was only a little over four or five days with the weekend in, in between there so probably yeah, probably about five days post at the most 
um, the diff part arrived um, and I got to complete the model, which is getting back to do not put a model together out of sequence in the order that they tell you to do it because you'll end up in a lot of pain. You seriously will, because when you go to put things together then they're, when they're not in the right order, uh, you will definitely pay the price for that as, as I have learnt. Okay, so 62 Impala finally signed off. So that's the Peterbilt, they're the boxes. So I can pack all this away, finally, pack it away into the shed. Time to start the next model. Now, as you would have seen my wow, wow, wow video, um, Paul from America sent me the US, um, a US boat, which is pretty fantastic. And I said in my last, I think I was just so excited in the last video, I said I was actually gonna uh, attempt this one next, but no, I'm not. As you see, I've still got another three down there. Uh, brother Pete Harley, I've got to get to that at some stage. This log trailer model is scaring the shit out of me because the trouble with AMT models, their instructions. I'll open this. I'll just get this out. The AMP, AMT models, this is their instructions, that's it. They're not very comprehensive, and not only that. Auntie Judy, uh, brother Ross gave me this from Auntie Judy's place before she passed. So every time my head touches that, I say hi to Auntie Judy. Um, yeah, so, and not only that, the um, the trees aren't even numbered with the um, part number. There's no part numbers on the trees. So even though the instructions give you a part number, uh, there is no actual part number on the trees. So anyway, so instead of going to um, the American version of the boat, I'm actually going to start on this model here. This is a MPC, I can't read that properly, um, model of a semi-tipper, which I want to put on the back of the Peterbilt there, and that's why I built that big long shelf, so that can go up there. So this is this is the start of my next model. Um, I haven't really looked at the instructions, but they look pretty good, they look fairly comprehensive. And when you're putting a model, you want good instructions, I, I, you know, I really, um, I didn't think the, Re the Revell um, instructions were. Like, I didn't think the Revell instructions were overly good. But after seeing, but after seeing the uh, AMT instructions, I realised they were actually quite good instructions. So this one looks fairly comprehensive and pretty good. So uh, I'm starting this model next because uh, I want to get this one up and built. So I'm finish up like sign off on the uh, on the Peter build up there, and so we can have its trail. So the first job would be uh, I've got to take the um, tray out into the shed and its bits and pieces and spray that up ready for um, ready for assembly. So the first thing is is to just clean it. The first thing is to give this uh, give the tray a clean and then get out while the sun's shining um, and it's a nice warm day and put some paint over it, um, a few layers of paint and then a nice coat of clear over it, which is what I've got to do first. But that's, an, that's a heavy tray, and, and there's a, quite a fair bit involved in the kit, which is really good. There's not a big, massive amount of pieces. I'll take that back, it's not a heavily involved kit. There's not a big amount, massive pieces. But, you know, there's, there's um, not some nice tail lights there. There's a fair, there's quite a few days' work. Um, it takes me at least minimum of a week to build a model. Um, I spend about probably three or four days painting the individual pieces, um, and then I usually um, let them dry for at least a good day or so, and then I put a coat of clear over everything. I've also gotten... Okay. I've also gotten some uh, very, very fine tip brushes for the very small parts. I've now just acquired this little bit of equipment, which has got the alligator clips on a stand and the magnifying glass with a light in it, that I can, um, like, clip the pieces to it and then under magnifying glass I can actually so I can clip the pieces to it and under magnifying glass I can get into those really really fine details of the model and try and do a good job with my and try and do a good job with my shaky big hands so okay well that's a little bit of my model review so um, yes yeah, so this the log truck here I bought this to go behind the Peterbilt and the thing is, you've got to change the whole back end of the truck. You've got to pull your fifth wheel off to put its own turntable on. So after realising that, I thought, well, I obviously need another truck. So 
I bought this one to, to put behind the log trailer. So instead of having a fifth wheel on the back, I'll, I'll set it up. Now, I did watch a review on this model. I've got shit going everywhere. I did watch a review on this model, and one of the reviewers said he had a lot of trouble fitting the parts, like um, the breather, the breather um, um, intake manner. Um, the air filter mounted on the side of the truck didn't actually mount into the thing, into the um, truck frame properly, and he had to cut and um, make that fit. So this will be an interesting one to build. I, I've watched two re two reviews on this model, um, and they weren't they weren't overly convincing that that is that is a great model to build. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. So, Rodeo Worlds, um, that's my review on models. Um, anyway. Happy trivia, stay safe, keep me in the breeze, catch you later, bye.